Hi, hello there. Welcome to my humble abode. You know something I always wondered? Why is it in cinema, the most romantic relationships are the most toxic ones in real life? to go back and watch old movies, but have you ever found yourselves going back and watching movies, or rather clips of them on YouTube? And when you look at them, you just think to yourself, holy shit, why did I like that movie? It was fucking cringe. Doesn't he own a shirt? I went down the rabbit hole with some of the old, cringy high school movies that I watched as a kid, and then I watched them as an adult, and one thing I saw with the romantic movies that girls used to spoon over is that the relationships in all of these movies that were popular were toxic as hell. I'm designed to kill. I don't care. I've killed people before. It doesn't no matter. Bitch, what in the ass crack? I mean, I think there'd be a little bit more questions than that. You know, like, what kind of people? What were the circumstances? Was your life in danger? How long ago was that? Like, you know, certain things. But no, this book and this movie was selling off the freaking shelves because he's a vampire. If it was a regular human being that was saying these things to you, would that have made sense? Would that have been okay? You know, Twilight's one of those movies that's the gift that just keeps on giving. And it seems like a cautionary tale to people who are obsessed with power and charm. And then it had the really cringy, cringy freaking moments. I mean, cringe to the point I wanted to slap my freaking self. Let's stop. Her blood is clean, you're killing her. Stop. What the fuck is that face, my guy? Come on. <laughs> oh god, the acting in this. Dude, I've read the books, and the books, you know, it was a little thing. And then I watched the movie, and I was like, okay, cool, I can see where some people are coming from. Personally, I think it's a little bit, you know. But I was riding on the coattails of the book. Or wait, did I read the book after I watched the movie? I don't really remember. But I did realize at some point in time that, mm, is the vampire using its charm on Bella? Is it really? Because for you to have someone that you like say that they've killed people straight up and, you know, your response is... I don't care. I've killed people before. It does not matter. It does not matter. It does not matter. I know what it's like to be so horny, your brain is no longer a functioning piece of tissue within your own body. It's been hijacked by the need to breed, but ordinarily, based on the lore for vampires, you shouldn't be able to breed with this dude. If he doesn't bleed anymore, how is the blood getting to his dish soap? Oh, I don't really like the rain. Any cold, wet thing, I don't really. It's gonna be your pussy soon, dude. But I found that the main component in all of these things, it was strange and kind of distressing to realize that this person's identity was completely wrapped up in this other person's identity. And that was the entire point of the entire movie franchise. And it was supposed to be romantic because she loves this vampire, which by the way, now you can't really think about it as being love because vampires do have that ability, whether they're aware of it or not, to be able to charm people into falling in love with them if they want to suck their blood. Maybe he didn't, Edward that is, fully realize what this meant. Or maybe he did, but she was just his pet. Considering that he only wanted to have fun with her and was totally against turning into her a vampire means he did not expect to grow her into her granny stage and keep her that way. What does it look like when you're like 17, 18, or whatever, however old these people were, and you're fuselaging your grandma? And why does this dude's head look like a mouse with a face full of gum? So yeah, I thought it was disturbing. She became quite obsessed. She didn't want to do anything with her life. She kept on trying to end herself because Edward was no longer around, knowing that he was a monster and she still wanted to be with him, even though he killed people and he wants to eat her, alienating her family, delving into a life full of danger. And one bordering on straight up cult vibes. I guess when the guy is mildly good looking and a vampire, all the things regular dudes would get jail for is totally fine. But then I kept seeing this trope over and over again. And I also looked at Fifty Shades of Grey, another great selling book. Hmm, I wonder what the similarities are between this. Christian Grey is not a vampire. Coveralls, so you protect your clothes? Could just take all my clothes off. Okay, no clothes. I mean, no coveralls. I can't think of anything else. Aha! But what he is, 
is rich. You see, when the guy is powerful or out of the league or reach of normal everyday people, they tend to think of things in this fantasy-like realm. Like the guy is very busy and successful, yet he finds 90% of his time able to spend every waking moment with this girl and this girl alone. That is not how the real world works. I've read so many fanfiction books where the guys are always rich or super hot or super powerful, and guess what they do? They dote on the girl and praise the girl and she can never do any wrong whatsoever. And it's like, dude, that's why I like writing my own stories. Jesus Christ, this is a little bit too much. I mean, the entire story is about the guy worshiping this woman and the females are always these dead inside plain Janes, which I'm guessing they cast these people for these roles so that their character is not too overpowering so that people who are watching can see themselves as the person. You use a blank slate human being that is void of any character or acting skills. So it's more believable that you could put yourself in their shoes. There's no reason for the people watching or the females watching to say, wow, look how charismatic she is. Man, he would never like me. I'm so boring. I'm this. But with people like this. I wanted to kill you. I've never wanted a human's blood so much in my life. I trust you. Well, it's not hard to use your imagination to paint yourself on top of this freaking brick board. Aha! So I've cracked the case. Vampires are powerful immortal beings. Rich men are powerful beings. So everything heinous that they could do is totally excusable because of the power they make the female feel. I feel like movies like these tend to give women these really unrealistic expectations of what men like this actually are. Vampires like Edward would in fact let you fall in love with them so they can keep feeding off of you until you die slowly. Men like Christian Grey would screw you and also 30 other women. And you know, you'd somehow have to be okay with that or not, just knowing that he could easily replace you. Mind you wouldn't be able to sit down for a week. What? Ew. God, the cringe. And wasn't this easy for girls to fall for this bad acting? Like, this is the hub, but with no... <laughs> the acting was horrible, the fantasy was cringe, and although the movies and the action did get a little bit better afterwards because it started to open up into more interesting facets of the story rather than just how much Bella loved Edward and was infatuated with his diamond shimmering fucking body. You gotta admit, the vampire glistening thing... <laughs> I mean, I don't think it did any favors for the franchise, but first ones we saw did it because Twinkle Twinkle is how you get girls drop them panties. He knew the hell what he was doing. He made himself look like that so she'd love him more. After all, diamonds are a girl's best friend. Can no one see the irony in this? When you look at situations like Joker and Harlequin in Suicide Squad, did you guys hear how I just ate my own tongue a while ago? It was freaking cringe. But she was his therapist and something about him made her forget all of her training, knowing that he was crazy and she suddenly fell in love with him and became crazy too. And despite the fact she knew what she was getting into, she was willing to die for him. What's his power? Either he's got the magic dick, or is there something mystical about him we don't know? And I think I cracked it, and he fits into the same category as those other guys. No, he's not a vampire. No, he's not necessarily rich. It's because... He doesn't give a fuck. Gotta, gotta, gotta. I am not someone who is love. I'm an idea. State of mind. You see, he's so far gone that when she was warned not to take the sky on because he cannot be turned, she was like, Hold my punani. <laughs> Watch me work this magic. He manipulated the shit out of her. And she was so lost in trying to fix him that she made herself get close to him in order to understand him, which only sucked her deeper into his black hole of non emotion. And then she realized this is not a man. Normal people don't act like this. Normal people on some level care about something. But the fact that he didn't made him mysterious and alluring and drew her in. It's a biological disadvantage that we women have. We see a guy that doesn't care about anything, doesn't care if he loses you, doesn't care if he keeps you. And the first thing you think is, whoa, he must be really strong. He doesn't care about anything. That means he's super confident, which must mean he's super strong and has won a lot of battles and has eaten a lot of pie. In the real world, Joker would not have cared if this woman killed herself. 
unless he was really trying to get laid and there were not many options out there. This is just a cutesy moment that I think people just decided to put out there just for Joker. But ideally crazy people like this would not care. Joker's not someone who really needs companionship. He's beyond those human traits. And while this is fancy schmancy and romantic, and I even found myself dripping a little bit at the side, whatever you want that to mean, it's not realistic. People see stuff like this and they're like, yes, yes, his rider die. How cute. I want a guy like that. Do you really though? A guy that requires you to harm yourself in order to prove that you love him. A guy that says he's killed many and that he's wanted to kill you and still wants to kill you. A monster that keeps you against his will and refuses to let you go. Not only are all the guys that girls at the time romanticize rich and powerful and they had that common denominator, but the girls were also very weak, no identity of their own, or way too nice too caring that they no longer care about their own self-interest and their identity becomes wrapped up in whoever they are fixated on. And as Joker said, this is an idea. It's an illusion of power that you think you have being with people like this. Girls always think and want to accept that they've tamed the dragon, that they are friends with this wild animal, which is why girls love horses so much, when in fact it never really is in their grasp. And as I grew older, I started to realize, wow, <laughs> it's actually pretty disturbing. And the reason why little girls will see it as romantic is because they don't get the big picture. They see the hot guy that's treating them like the world, they ignore the nice guys that happen to look a little nerdy to them, and go for the big macho guys that will end up screwing them over and leaving them because they have way more options. Get the French toast out of here. Of course, I can look back at these movies and laugh at the sheer cringe of them all, but I'm also very, very aware, more so than ever, what exactly they were, which makes it kind of freaky. And a lot of my friends that I knew when we were growing up watching this in the past, uh, well, let's just say a lot of them kind of hate men. And I think it's because they had these unrealistic expectations that were not separated from these stupid films. So here's the question. I explained the allure and why toxic relationships in cinema or so alluring or romantic. Why are they not in real life? <clears throat> Ready for it? Because they can feel it. When you're up close and personal to it and you can feel it, suddenly it's not as fun as romantic as you thought it was. Everything looks fun and romantic from the outside looking in. How nice it would be. How great it is. Oh, he really loves her. That's so cute. I want that kind of love. Tired of that stupidity. When in fact, the characters in these stories behind closed doors and aside from the happy endings are probably the most unhappy and abused individuals. I just thought that was interesting. This was a weird video, I know. But I just had that thought. I've had that thought for a while and I kept wondering to myself, what is it? What is it about these guys? Or girls? Well, I don't know. It seems like girls have that problem, but more often than not, when you see guys <laughs> in these movies and the girl is like this, they run. They usually got it right. I guess because they have the most to lose. But I just thought that would be fun. Also, they're so, so silly. They're really cringe with the acting. And we can look at how film has evolved nowadays and sit back and enjoy watching these and just laugh at how every single one of us, mostly, at some point in time with one of these films, fell into the romanticism of very disturbed, toxic relationships. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Ulturi. You ask, we answer.